All right, so on a problem like this, we are going to cover everything on PEMDAS. We're gonna do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, as well as subtraction. The reason why I like this problem is because we're just not gonna go like follow through PEMDAS, but we're gonna go through and talk a little bit deeper about each and every one of these because PEMDAS is great to remember, but understanding each one of these a little bit better is really what's gonna separate you from other students when you're taking a test or when you're doing your homework and your teacher's like, ah, you actually know that extra little step that you need to do. That's what I wanna help you out with in this video. And each one of these steps have a little nuance that we need to understand. The first one, we're gonna talk about parentheses. So you recognize here we have two parentheses. We have the four minus three, and then we have the big parentheses. So what's important to recognize about parentheses or grouping symbols, if you're doing brackets as well, is we're always going to want to do the innermost parentheses first. So we have big parentheses, which is outer, and then you can see with the little smaller parentheses here. Let's rewrite this. Let's apply the operation on the innermost parentheses first. You only have subtraction, but if you had more than one operation, you would again follow PEMDAS from the start. But in this case, we're just going to do the four minus three, and then let's simplify. Okay, so what's important about this is once you've applied the operation, like I could have used parentheses around the one, when you have an addition or a subtraction outside parentheses of just one term, you don't really need that parentheses. If you had it with multiplication next to the term, then I would keep the parentheses, just because that would still signify any number next to parentheses is telling us that we're using or applying the multiplication. So now we have a couple of operations. So now you can see I have my squared, that is gonna represent the exponents. So anytime you have a number to an exponent, that's gonna be the next thing you're going to do. And again, you're just gonna be looking for any number that's going to have a power. And so in this case, we have a three squared, which again, is rather easy to be able to compute. That is just gonna be a nine. And I know it takes, seems like it's taking a lot of work, but again, follow me here. I am a teacher and I just wanna kind of show you this process. You could definitely do a couple of these steps in your head if you wanted to, or if you're a little bit stronger, but I wanna kind of check off each one of these step by step. So now it's going to complete the exponents, which is just going to be squaring the three. Once we got rid of this parenthesis, it's now important now to focus on the next set of parentheses, right? We don't wanna focus on this multiplication here that we have going on with the two. I forgot to mention that. I got a little bit happy with my talking. So once we get rid of one parenthesis, it's now moved to the next parenthesis, right? Which you can see is here. That is why I started PEMDAS all over again. I did PEMDAS inside of here, which is just subtraction. So that was fast and easy. Then I look at the next parenthesis. I do PEMDAS again, which now we're at the second stage of PEMDAS. We just did our exponents. Now what we're gonna do is look for our multiplication and our division. Both multiplication and division, there's something important that we need to keep in mind. When we're doing multiplication and division, we need to look for left to right. It's not multiply before divide or divide before multiply. It's from left to right. So what I want you to recognize here is we have a nine times five, and then we have a five divided by 15. But what you'd probably wanna do here is just multiply before you go ahead and divide. So it's just super important. In this case, it doesn't really simplify or matter as much, but it is important just to recognize that you always wanna be consistent going left to right. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply one operation first, I'll do the multiplying, and then I'll do the division. And so now, again, we're still inside the parentheses, so we now we just checked off multiplication and division. Now it's time to do addition and subtraction. And again, the same idea applies, guys. We need to make sure we're doing left to right. Unfortunately, the problem that I chose, again, it doesn't really matter if you actually, since we're doing addition, in this case, you could actually get away with it if you actually did subtraction before addition, but I don't want you to worry about that. Same thing happened here, but just remember, go from left to right. So again, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to add these first, and then I'll show subtracting by the one. So now what you can see is I have now fully extinguished everything that was inside the parentheses. But notice what I did. Over here, I didn't keep the parentheses. And again, because you don't really need to keep the once you've extinguished the parentheses and you have subtraction next to it or an addition, you can leave it there. But if you have multiplication next to those parentheses, I would highly recommend that you keep the parentheses because you just want to remind yourself that you are multiplying a two times a 10. Because sometimes if that was like a negative five, students would think it'd be like, oh, two minus a five, which is not the case. So now I can multiply the two minus a five and I'm going to get a 10. Now in this problem, it was fairly easy to approach because we just had a really long problem. But what about if you had to apply the or of operations and you're dealing with a rational expression? That can sometimes get a little confusing and that is what I'm gonna tackle in the next video.